Hello, fiber people. So today I'm making an indigo bath and I'm using yeast and sugar um, and washing soda to exhaust the oxygen from the dye vat. When you're using indigo, um, you need to eliminate all of the oxygen from the dye vat um, in order for it to work. And then what will happen is you'll get, end up with a greenish looking liquid and then when you raise your fiber up into the oxygen out of the vat it'll have a chemical reaction it'll oxidize and then turn blue isn't that awesome there's lots of ways to eliminate the um, oxygen from your dye vat but I like to do stuff in my kitchen so I don't like to use a lot of chemicals so I already had a bunch of yeast on hand because I bake a lot of bread so um, you can use just those little packets of yeast it takes two tablespoons of yeast and it takes three tablespoons I think it's three tablespoons let me let me check my notes really quick of um, washing soda hold on Yep, it's two tablespoons. And then you're going to need three tablespoons of sugar. So what you do is you get your water nice and tepid warm, like 104 degrees. And then you're going to dissolve your, um, your yeast in there and your sugar. So your two tablespoons of yeast and three tablespoons of sugar in warm water dissolve. And then in a separate jug, and I just used, um, I just used an old juice jug that I had. In a separate jug, you're going to dissolve two tablespoons of washing soda with two to three tablespoons of your indigo powder. And indigo comes. I've got it over here. Um, you can buy it in a powder from several places. I get mine from Dharma Trading Company. In Seriously, they're a great company to work for. They kind of take forever to ship over here to Illinois, but because um, they're in California. But other than that, I, wow! If you're gonna ever get silk over there, that is the place to get silk. It's crazy cheap. So, anyways, this is gonna sit in here for 48 hours, and I have to put the lid on it. If you don't have a lid for yours then you need to like put it in saran wrap. You can do this in the sun too. Excuse my dirty stuff over here. But anyways, um, that needs to sit at about 104 degrees for a minimum of 48 hours in order for the chemical reaction to happen. Now let me take you over here. Over here I have some um, some myro myrobalin and let me show you really quick. Let me pause. Because when you dye stuff in myrobalin, which is also its own mordant, um, and you over dye indigo, it'll make a teal green. So let me show you what myrobalin looks like when it's dyed on a fiber. Okay, so myrobalin makes a buttery yellow color. And so that's how you get your teal greens, is you um, dye it first in myrobalin and then over dye it in your indigo. Now over here, I have my cochineal dye vat. Oh, hold on, let me get a little stick. To, ah, here's a little stick. Pull this out. This um, really only takes about an, mm, 30 minutes to an hour, but I stopped it last night and then turned on the heat again. This is cochineal red. It started to turn a little bit toward the purple side on me because I put my strainer down in there and the and just stuck my bugs down in the hot water and the strainer was one of those metal strainers and apparently there was iron in it because it started to turn this a little bit purple. You see how it's kind of purple right there? So I pulled that out really quick because I don't want this to be purple. I want it to be um, red. So let me show you what it looks like with cochineal red. Hold on. Okay, here's my cochineal red, but look at this. This is my cochineal purple that I made. 
And this is what happens when you introduce copper into your cochineal dye bath. Now I'm going to take you back upstairs. I'm down here in my studio. Um, so let me show you what the cochineal bugs look like. Okay, so now I have you in one of my bathrooms. And <laughs> this is pretty much my, my fiber bathroom. Um, I took my dog pen, I put it over my bathtub, and this is where I dry stuff. And this is also where I dry um, my fleeces, because I'll wash my, my raw fleeces in the bathtub, and then I'll put this thing over and I'll dry them. So there's some more cochineal red alpaca fiber that is drying. And these are my cochineal bugs. So I just stuck this thing in there. I had a whole bunch of them in, and so I was feeling lazy. And rather than put them back in my little pot, I just stuck them in the water. And this little metal started to t turn it kind of purple. So I pulled it out. But these are what cochineal bugs look like. Kind of look a little bit like dried raisins or maybe even dried blueberries. Um, but they're little tiny bugs. Um, that are raised in South America uh, and just pulled off of um, cactus and they're really high in carminic acid. So um, I've used these bugs oh, like eight times to do um, probably over a pound of wool so far. So when you see cochineal bugs and you notice that they're a little bit more expensive than other natural dye stuff, that's why because you can keep using them and using them and using them. It's very simple. That dye bath that I made, I made in like maybe an hour, which is really fast when you're talking about natural dye stuff. You just boil it down, strain off, you know, you always want to strain, don't put your bugs in the water. Strain them off each time. Just heat them, strain them, put them in the thing, and it's just so fun. You do have to use alum to mordant it, but it is wonderful stuff. Or you can use, you know, iron or copper if you're looking for different colors. I hope that helps. Have fun dyeing. So much fun. And so many wonderful things you can create. This was uh, my Robolin with a little too much iron in it. I was going for green, and it kind of turned gray on me. But you know what? It'll be pretty next to the yellow. And I'll come up with something for it. So, um, talk to you later. Bye-bye.